Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up for all things Switch all the time. Hit that like button if you appreciate the amount of work that we're putting into the channel and we thank you all for watching. So on to the Banner Saga. Originally a crowdfunded project by three developers who worked on Star Wars The Old Republic, this definitely has a lot of pedigree behind it. The three developers chose to set the game in a Viking inspired fantasy setting as they were sick to death with what they thought was the overdone elves, dwarves and orcs dynamic at the time. It has a beautiful visual style influenced by Elvind Earl's art of the 1959 Disney film Sleeping Beauty as well as the work of Ralph Bakshi and Don Bluth. According to the developers, their aim was to create a mature game for adults in the vein of Game of Thrones or The Black Company. They wanted you, the player, to feel emotionally involved and engaged in the story, but also responsible for making life and death decisions. So, did they succeed? Let's find out. The game takes place in a Viking legend inspired world, stuck in a perpetual twilight since the sun stopped moving weeks before the events of the game, mainly populated by humans and giant like creatures called Vals, as the Dredge, basically the White Walkers from Game of Thrones, descend from the north. To the west, Val Vognir, together with several other companions, includes his longtime childhood friend Hakon, the retired Val warrior Ubin, and the resourceful human Elric, a charge with escorting Ludin, prince of the human capital Abarang, to the Val capital. The purpose of this is to seal an alliance between the humans and the Vals. Way over on the other side of the country, you also play as the hunter Rook and his daughter Alette as they encounter a lone dredge near their homes as they hunt in the forest. Predictably, he is not alone, and as you soon find out, things turn swiftly to hell. Banner Saga plays like an interactive novel. You're often given decisions to make. Unlike many games where these decisions don't have an impact, however, every single choice you make will have life and death consequences. In that regard, the game really reminded me of one of those choose your own adventure books that if you're an old fart like me, you probably remember. The storytelling is excellent here and you care about the characters from a very early stage. It was lovely to see the racial dynamic between the humans and the Vals play out, but also how much they cared about each other as the story progressed. There is a good chunk of banter between all the characters, which makes it even more tragic when one of your choices leads to the death of a major character. In the Banner Saga, you can make a choice that seems flippant, only to find that one of your favourite characters is now dead and the game just continues. There's no stopping for tears or whatever and it stings, it actually hurts when you make a bad decision and that's part of the charm of this game. In a funny sort of way, the game's all about being realistic. If you're faced with an overwhelming number of enemies and you choose to charge in, swing in that axe above your head, expect there to be some serious consequences. However, take your people, run and hide like a coward and things could also go equally as badly. This is where the story worked really well, but also became a little bit irritating. I would think to myself, okay, what's the most reasonable approach to take in a situation? I would then take that action and someone would die. The game gives you no indication as to whether your actions are going to be successful. Again, I understand that's why the developers did this. They wanted you to feel the weight of your actions as any leader would, but it can get a little bit tedious when you make the wrong choice. Having that weight upon your shoulders is exactly what the developers wanted. It's what they intended. So whether you like it or not, you will end up caring when your decision leads to a village being slaughtered. Although, and in my opinion, slightly regrettably, not all the text is voice acted. The dialogue here is very well written indeed, and the characters have a lovely dynamic between them. And when inevitably one of your favourite characters falls in battle or dies in the quest, you're going to miss them. You're almost going to mourn them. But the caravan keeps on marching. But I felt that not giving you any indication as to whether your choices would be the right ones or not was a bit of a mistake. And overall, I give story 17 out of 20. The Banner Saga simply looks beautiful. 
I originally played it on an iPhone about three or four years ago, and at the time I was just blown away, as was the rest of the community, at how incredible this game looks. Now, as mentioned at the start of the video, it was inspired by some pretty epic artists, but it's something that you really have to see in person to appreciate its true quality. It manages to achieve a level of quality without having a huge amount of animation actually on offer. Just things like pieces of hair blowing in the wind, or the tassels of your flag as your party marches across the landscape add a wonderful sense of place and time to the experience. The world can feel harsh and cold, but also beautiful and calm. When in combat, this artistic style continues with an isometric view of the battle. Character animations feel weighty, and as your giant Vol swings his sword into an enemy, you really feel like the developers put a lot of love and time into every frame of that animation. For me, graphics score 18 out of 20. The gameplay in Banner Saga is basically an interactive story as mentioned. It follows the two main characters, each having their own story that ultimately merges into one. The core of the game is a single player campaign where as the leader of your people, you must make decisions about what supplies to buy, when to upgrade your warriors, and make huge life and death decisions that may indeed lead to the suffering and eventual demise of your people. When you come across a group of travelers on the road, it's up to you to decide, do you keep them? Do you let them come with you? Or do you not trust them? Do you think actually they might turn against you? And the decision you make will have a knock-on effect on the future of your group, its morale, and also the supplies that are used. With the more people in your group, the more supplies you'll get through. And these are essential. If you run out of supplies, everybody dies. So it feels like a bit of a juggling act, and there is a resource management element to the game. The other half of your time is going to be spent in isometric turn-based combat. If you're familiar with games such as Final Fantasy Tactics and Shining Force, then you're definitely going to know what to expect here. You will grow a party of heroes, upgrading their abilities with the renown that they gain from fighting in battle, but also managing strategically their complementary abilities. Take for example the archers. These have obviously ranged attack, but if you try firing at an armoured foe, then it's not going to do anything. However, charge in with your melee, slam the armour, break it down, and then shoot that perfect shot between the chainmail and you're going to do devastating damage. If you're not particularly strategically minded, then you may find this a difficult and challenging game. And when your poor strategy leads to one of your favourite characters falling, you certainly feel like you need to avenge them. In battle, you can move a certain number of spaces. This is shown by either a blue square or a yellow square. However, if you move to the yellow square, you're essentially using up your willpower. This becomes important because also when you attack an enemy, you can add extra damage by using some of said willpower, but it's a finite resource. Attacks are split into strength and armor attacks, represented by red and blue icons respectively. Now some enemies have no armor and as such your attacks will come straight through with a strength attack and cause them massive damage. However, armoured foes, you will need to use the blue section to break down that defence. Otherwise, you'll find your attacks do little to no damage. There's a waypoint system so that you can avoid certain enemies in combat. It's not just A to B. You can have A, B and C and have your character move around in exactly the way you want. Now, Banner Saga's been out a while, but it was critically acclaimed for just how tight its combat system is. I played the game in portable and handheld modes, and I have to say, I actually preferred this one in portable mode, just because you had the touch screen, which made many of your actions much quicker. In dock mode, the game does look beautiful, and it plays pretty well with a controller, but yeah, for me, this is really a game that benefits from having a touch screen. If you're finding the combat just a little bit too tricky, you can lower the difficulty, but I just don't like doing that in games. I'd rather lose one of my favourite characters than drop the difficulty down, but that's just me. The strategy takes elements from those amazing games mentioned before and forces you to think like a general. However, the story elements can become a little bit irritating when you're forced to make a seemingly easy choice that turns out not to be easy and you lose one of your favourite characters 
or there's a hideous outcome. Overall for me, gameplay gets 17 out of 20. Sound and music are outstanding. The fully orchestrated score was written by Austin Wintry, for which he was nominated for the 2014 Original Dramatic Score, and for good reason. Just take a listen to this. Combat sounds are very good indeed, but it's the more subtle elements of the game that I really liked. Things like the footsteps, the groans and wails of your train and caravan as it moves across the harsh and barren landscape, the windswept hills and the sounds of the howls in the distance. Every little detail is done so well and with such high fidelity. Sound scores 19 out of 20. Priced at $17.99 or $19.99, Banner Saga represents mixed value. If the game had just come out, then I would say, wow, that's an incredible price for a great game. However, this has been out on iOS, it's been out on PC, and currently you can buy the game for around about £5 on those platforms. Now, I understand there's certainly a lot of work that goes into porting a game. Does it justify such a hike in price? I'm not entirely sure. As a standalone experience, however, and with the inevitable sequels lined up to come onto Nintendo Switch very shortly, this is definitely one you might want to think about buying. The 10 hour campaign is an absolute triumph. The music is beautiful, the graphics are great, and the experience itself with those Final Fantasy Tactics inspired turn based battles is very enjoyable and equally challenging. While your choices have huge consequences on the experience, it isn't a game I really felt I had to go back to, especially knowing that the sequels are just around the corner. But think of it more like a really good novel. There's a good chance that in a couple of years you may play through the trilogy back to back and it'll be a beautiful experience. Overall though, 10 hours of gameplay isn't bad. It would have been nice to see the multiplayer aspect that was later released on Steam as Factions and just doesn't seem to be here at all. For me, the whole package is slightly overpriced compared to its console counterparts and scores 13 out of 20. With a very well written story indeed, beautiful graphics, amazing sound and a nice combat system, but unfortunately slightly overpriced in general, I give the Banner Saga 84%. There's no doubt about it, it is an excellent game, and I'm really looking forward to reviewing the second one, which I should receive in a couple of weeks. Cheers guys, keep your switch up. See ya!